what up, it's your boy T Bear here with the ashes. So, um, I may be not so familiar on how the walking, only reason why a lot of people talking about the Walking Dead has gone down, but a lot of people are saying that the later season that Walking Dead ain't what it used to be before. Like, and I'm like, I've been watching it. I've been watched. I watched it through many of the many of the. Uh, Dude, I've watched a lot of them over the past through recently and finished up to where I got when I started watching was like the layers of the sixth season. So um I'm still gonna see what everybody's saying ever since um throughout the years that Walking Dead has gone down. So maybe Mojo watch Mojo may help me pe uh realize what part has gone down with the Walking Dead. So this is top ten reasons the walk the Walking Dead is going downhill. So let's check this shit out. Can we bring back Frank Darabont, please? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten reasons the Walking Dead is going downhill. Before we get to our list, we want to know: Are you still fully invested in the Walking Dead? Or are you in the slow process of shambling away? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to check out our discussion over at Mojo Talks about what's been killing The Walking Dead in the link below. For this list, we're taking a look at how far the series has come, and examining the points that make us shake our head in shame and wish for earlier days. Whether it's due to poor writing, inconsistent characters, or anything in between, if it's bringing the show down, it is eligible for this list. And since a lot of these gripes are tied to plot points old and new, a spoiler alert is now in effect. I see it. Number 10. Characters make stupid decisions at an alarming rate. Oh. Splitting up is never a good idea in any horror-themed show or movie. Yet it happens all the time. In The Walking Dead's case, you'd think our survivors would be a little smarter when it comes to this. They've been out there surviving for years, yet they still go off on their own little adventures, getting killed in forests and mucking up plans that were already set in motion. In most cases, the characters, both good and bad, are intelligent and come up with great plans. Other times, they appear to have an IQ of one. Number nine. The series struggles to justify its own existence. Oh yeah, this. Honestly, when every second funny person Funny about it, I just had co I had talked with my coworkers about it, and they mentioned this part right here with the terminus, the whole terminus thing, pretty messed thing up, messed it up. Turned into a madman. What's the point of even living in this world? It's been years of starvation, violence, horror, panic, and heartache for our heroes. You don't have to do this. Why keep fighting? What's the point of living in the world where that is your life? If there were a goal other than fighting the big bad guy, maybe we'd feel more inclined to see how Rick and his group fare. Mm. How about infected animals? Mm. Zombies slowly turning back into humans? Aliens? Just give us something different. And a hunt for the explanation so there's a mystery and new plot. Mm -hmm. Number 8. Plague Weapons Ah, We've seen Rick covered in walker blood before. It's been in the character's wounds, in eyes, in mouths, in places you don't even want to know about. Mm. But now... A new rule has been established in the show that completely disregards that previously yeah, established okay. aspect of world building. Negan decides to coat his army's weapons in that walker was guns crazy how in that the happened. hopes that it will infect our heroes and kill them. If it works, then by that logic and what everyone's already been through, everyone should be dead already. Right. Number seven, overly violent for no reason. True. We know the show's violent. It has to be. It's a violent world. Gratuitous violence, on the other hand, is just there for the shock value. Or even worse, to pad out the running time of a very thin episode. What the hell are you gonna do now, sport? Oh, oh yeah, you're my neck off like that with It doesn't add anything besides showing when off some admittedly impressive oh, use of dear. practical oh, makeup. Lord. And after a while, the audience just becomes mm. numb to it. Sure, that takes and viewers on the same journey as the Spencer, characters, ooh, but it God. doesn't make the constant violence any less tiresome. Number six, the cheap ploy cliffhangers. cliffhangers. Lot, they mentioned that too, the fingers. They get people talking and eager to find out what happens next. But The Walking Dead has been full of them lately, and their impact has almost completely been lost. Mm. The major one was not revealing Negan's victim at the end of season six. Yeah, a lot of people was hurt about, was pissed about that. <laughs> like, I actually let, I watched the reaction about, I actually watched the reaction on that though. Like, we watched, we got to that episode, 
a lot of people was pissed at that cliffhanger. It was crazy. From that, we got the infamous Dumpster Gate, mm -hmm. a Glenn death fake out that cheapened his actual death later on. Mm -hmm. We also got Daryl being shot by Dwight, mm -hmm. only to find out it's just a small wound. Come on, guys, give us real tension and stakes, not these cop outs. Number five. It's too hard to get invested in the characters. Mm -hmm. We cared about these characters in the beginning. Each member of the group was fully thought out and developed, and brought something to the table. These days, though, it feels like we get a half a dozen new characters every episode who are mm -hmm. set up to be an integral part of the team, yet they get like five minutes of screen time per couple of episodes. We can't even remember their names half the time, or where they even came from. So why should we feel anything when they bite the dust? Or in mm -hmm. some cases, just disappear. Looking at you, Heath. Right. Yeah, what the fuck happened to Heath? Stretching out plot lines far too long. Remember when season two's endless search for Sophia felt like a drag? Mm. Recent seasons make those episodes feel like action movies in comparison. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch the group walking for ten minutes an episode. We want drama, action, and horror. A shorter season would tighten the pacing of the show and trim all the fat. We all know that when The Walking Dead is good, it's really good. And we'd like that more often. Yeah, Unfortunately, part. given that the franchise is a huge cash cow for AMC, we doubt they'll be making shorter seasons anytime soon. Mm. Number three, characters backtrack and go nowhere. Mm. Say what you will about the pacing, but the earlier seasons had some amazing character development and transformations. Mm. I didn't ask for this. I killed my best friend for you people for Christ's sake. We really got to see how the harsh post-apocalyptic life affected our heroes. Unfortunately, it's not really the case in more recent seasons. The writing is inconsistent, and no character is truly distinguishable anymore. Their motives, characteristics, and mental states constantly flip-flop until we have no idea what they're thinking. We get Morgan turning crazy, finding himself, then turning crazy again. We get Rick turning into a dictator, deciding everything's a democracy, then turning into a dictator again. Characters should have an arc, not a circle. We won't ready! What? Okay, Number two, it's repetitive. Oh. How many times can we watch the group more find a safe place, more, more, get it destroyed, kill that. the bad guy, find a safe place, get it destroyed, and so on and so on? It's riveting the first couple of times, but then there aren't any surprises anymore. There's no reason to watch the show if we know how the season's gonna end. Having a different bad guy per season would speed up the pace a bit, but now we're getting three seasons per villain. Sure. Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance as Negan is fun, but he can only lean back and swear so many times before the shtick starts to wear thin. Me? <laughs> I ain't doing shit. Number one, there's no end in sight. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can allow The Walking Dead to not have a clear objective in sight for the first couple of seasons, but after eight seasons, we need some kind of goal or reason to keep watching. Just surviving isn't exactly an exciting plotline to watch. And apparently, neither are endless assassination attempts on Negan. With no major game-changing plot device in sight, what we're seeing in the show today is probably going to continue on into seasons 10, 12, 14, and onwards, mm. until the series is but a shambling, empty husk of what it used to be. Wow. Oh, honey, look at you. You're a damn mess. <laughs> So, I'm going agree with it. our list, or are you still sporting your weekly shit and pants as you tune in for Rick and his gang's <laughs> desperate struggle to survive? And well, sure I agree with it. It's, uh, they, this is before the season finale, where the season finale the, this like it may be a little changed, but who knows? But I can kind of see what they mean by going down. But maybe I'm pretty lenient on like certain things. I'm not like. Like stuff like that to kill like a move, a move of the show. I still think the show's pretty awesome and still, but I understand what well, I guess. I guess me because I watched the the later episodes, later season first instead of watching from beginning and could understand. But watch from beginning, I probably understand why it's considered going downhill. But I still feel like this this walk with this still pretty awesome to watch though. Still worth watching though, in my opinion. But that's everybody else's opinion. It is pretty different. But other than that, if you like more reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.